What's up, everyone? We're going to be talking today about uh, why you should not run a blocker, like, ever. It actually doesn't make any sense at all. I know a lot of people have been talking about running blockers because, you know, front runners getting into the front position and then getting to angling and scheming and all that is, like, real bad and stuff. Uh, but I actually don't even think it's that bad. Angling and scheming when inherited isn't that good i mean it's definitely good right it's still an acceleration skill on the that's perfectly procced every time on the final leg but still has to pass a wit check and when it's inherited it's like a lot weaker it's pretty scary if satan sky does it for sure but it's otherwise it's not uh it's not actually that worrisome uh, but also blockers are in general are just kind of like bad right let's say you have three runners right so each each of your runners let's say you're running three aces assuming they're all equally good or whatever uh they'll all get you like 30 33 percent of your wins right because you have three of them right 33 times three is 100 percent, right so if you get rid of one of your aces and run a blocker now all of your wins has to come from two umas so you need the two aces to now cover for the one ace that you're missing in Cancer Cup. And Cancer Cup is going to be a huge RNG race, right? Like everything about this race is pretty much just, uh, can you RNG into a victory? There's no like real way to play. Like there's no real way to like set yourself up to win reliably. Uh, the biggest RNG factor, especially for front runners, uh, which here I guess we can show very briefly, uh, is position keep. This is on my sheet that I made. Uh, but so if we go and look at things like the position keep stuff, so this is 400 wit, 600 wit, uh, 900 wit, and uh, 1200 wit. So this is like the, the differences in position keep and stuff based on how much wit you have. And the real, like, I guess, biggest takeaway or whatever, if you don't want to look into, like, the numbers and all that, is right here. The expected uh, gain from position keep. So this is 400, 600, 900, and 1200 wit. Uh, the reason why the 1200 wit is lower when it should actually be higher is because I have them using the pace, pace up target speed instead of the overtake target speed. Uh, if you know anything about position keep, you know that if you're in second as a front runner, all this, by the way, pertains to if you're a front runner. Uh, this chi, this, all these calculations are for that. It's not for any other style. But if you're a front runner and you are not in first, if you're in second and you pass the position keep uh, check, you get this overtake target speed, which for this course is is this amount. If you're in first and you pass the position to keep check, you get this amount of target speed. This or this is your new target speed, I should say. So, uh, I'm using the 1200 wit always to pace up, and I'm using everyone else is always overtaking. There's not really a very good way to model this dynamically, so that's like one of the caveats of how I how I did this. So just be aware of that, but. So anyway, for position keep, you see that the total expected distance gained is about the same for everybody. Increasing your wit really doesn't do much for that. And this is honestly uh, where I expected uh, wit to actually matter the most, or this is where you'd actually gain the most amount of distance from increasing your wit. But uh, one thing I didn't think about is when you're position keeping, uh, if you pass a position keep check, you run one section length, right? which is here, it's 66 meters. And then when you're done, uh, there's a three second cooldown. Now there are situations where you don't run this full length. Uh, but again, for this model, I said you're always running this full length. If you're in first, you might actually not run this full length. And that would give a, a, a decent advantage to the person in first. But I think for pretty much every other case, you're pretty much always gonna run this the whole length. So it's not worth worrying about too much. But you run this full length, it's 66 meters, and then you go on a three second cooldown. So running 66 meters and three second cooldown, it equates to about a, uh, like it takes you six seconds to 
when you pass a position keep so you get this three seconds and then it takes you a little bit over three seconds to run this length whereas if you fail a position keep uh you have a two second cooldown and then you do another check so you can do a lot more checks when you're failing checks than when you're succeeding and because of the way that position keep works and that it takes so long to pass a position keep check the more checks you're passing the like harder it is to pass more additional checks because you'll be out of position keep by the time that ends so position keep kind of gates itself based on the fact that it takes a long time to complete a successful position keep check and again I, like i said this um this isn't necessarily always the case if you're in first but for this model i just did it that way because it's extremely difficult to model it in another way so yeah position keep actually doesn't do a whole ton for getting ahead as a blocker um these are both assuming equal power right because that's like the only other stat that matters before final egg it's like power power and wit are your only two uh stats that are really going to change how fast you run the opening and middle leg this also only uses middle leg target speed it doesn't ever use the opening leg but the opening leg target speed is um it is higher but again it's it's equal for everybody so uh, it doesn't matter uh the other the actual biggest factor in increasing your wit giving you like distance is this average section speed right here uh, this is a linear increase as you gain wit um, and then i calculated over here to, like how much of an advantage you have i guess so 1200 wit they'll finish the um they'll finish the middle leg in 53 seconds point 53 point six eight blah 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 this is only speed right this does not include position keep or anything like that because i don't want to keep things isolated from one another you start adding all in like all the rng stuff into it all the calculations it gets very noisy um but yeah so with just the average section speed a 1200 wit racer finishes in 53.685 blah 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 seconds so when they finish the middle leg this is where these two runners will be based on just section speed so this is like two meters behind and this one's like three meters behind which is equivalent to these lengths so one length and 1.3 uh the biggest thing with this difference in distance traveled is that it's flat there's no variance there's no rng in this this is always well there is there's rng but it's equal rng it's you roll between two numbers and it's equally distributed so i mean yeah you could get unlucky and get like bad section speeds but it's not like this down here or downhill mode which i haven't talked about yet where you'll have a lot more rng and standard deviation and stuff this is all equal equal distribution of outcomes oh yeah this is actually your biggest factor in terms of why wit gets you through middle leg uh faster than anything else and then the last thing we need to talk about for wit is downhill this is also linear in the chance to enter downhill it's yeah it's completely linear in the how much you get per wit it's like i think it's four percent per 100 wit yeah because this is eight percent difference here that's four percent per 100 wit uh but as you when you go into downhill mode you have a 20 percent chance per second to exit downhill mode and that's always 20 percent so it doesn't matter how high your downhill mode chance of entering gets you always have a one in five chance to exit while you're in it and then you can see like uphills here uh or not uphills up times sorry for each for each wit number and then you know total gain of lengths which is this number is how much distance you're expected to cover from downhill uh there is some deviation here and it does decrease as you get higher wit that's generally the uh the recurring theme is the higher your wit is the less deviation you'll have from your mean which is important because it means your outcomes are less varied you can you can have higher confidence that 
you're going to have better outcomes with higher wit. And that's the way like skill activation works as well with higher wit. Higher wit is just more consistent. So yeah, it's hard to see here. The numbers do go down, uh, but the standard deviation in position keep is like, it's bad. And this is probably the biggest reason why wit is pretty weak in general. Well, actually it's pretty weak. It's not that weak, but the, the reason why race outcomes in Cancer Cup are so random is because of the standard deviation in position keep. Um, if you look at one standard deviation, 68% of outcomes, you get a deviation of like 1.1, which is, it's really big, right? This is very similar to what you get from the section offset. Or the section average section speed. So this race really for front runners comes down to how many times do you pass your position keep checks? And that's about it. And yeah, having higher wit, it does have some effect, right? This is half a check higher than 400 wit here. So it is more reliable, but it's not much more reliable. I don't have this in this chart anywhere, but if you look at all this data, 1200 wit does come out ahead, right? So a 1200 wit racer against a 600 wit racer is like, it's like 80% chance to come out ahead in at the end of the middle leg, which is very significant, right? Like that's a big number, but that's one 1200 wit against one 600 wit. The chance of you actually just running against one other front runner is probably pretty low. In fact, if you're running against one other front runner, they're probably bringing two at least, right? So you have to pass this 80% twice. So you do 80% times 80%, which will net you a 64% chance for this to happen, right? And that's for two front runners. And this. If you've looked at skill proc chance, you know where this is going in that the more other runners you have to beat, the smaller your number is going to get. If you do three, it's like 51%, 51.2, I think like that. And then, you know, if there's five other front runners, if, if you're or not five, four other front runners, um, I don't know how low it is. It's, it's even lower. But the point is that this blocker that you're running isn't actually going to be that reliable and stopping your opponents from getting in the first position. And like I said at the start, this blocker has 0% chance of winning because they have no speed, right? You're probably like uh, 600 speed or something. And then like 1200 power, 1200 wit, right? That's if you're, that's if you're extremely well statted as a blocker. And the biggest like point of running, oh God, that's so ugly. The biggest point of running like a, like a debuffer or something that's not an ace is to A, to get you to win more. And B is that it's like easier generally to train, but a blocker is not easier to train than an ace right it's the exact same stat they're not stats the exact same skills and stuff which is definitely the hardest part of training an ace front runner is that you need to get groundwork and three greens and then you need to get i guess like angling and scheming and stuff a blocker doesn't need that but the hardest part of getting a front runner in general is just groundwork and the three greens that you need. Um, people like Smart Falcon, it's way easier to do, but you know, it's still like, that's that's where all the difficulty comes in, in running and raising a front runner and blocker. So it's not even, it's not even easier to raise a blocker than it is an ace front runner. The only thing you're doing is just changing the stat layouts instead of 1200 speed, 1200 power, 600 wit, you're 600 speed, 1200 power, 1200 wit. That's it. And I guess you could maybe cut stamina and guts as well, but 
And then if you ever run randomly into a lobby with no front runners, then your blocker is essentially just a dead slot. So you're just running two aces. Now the chance of that happening is admittedly very low, but uh, the point still stands that a blocker is not a debuffer. If you look at like a speed debuffer, a speed debuffer, you also are planning to not have it win, but it's also buffing your runners, right? So if your speed debuffer debuffs, we'll say, even though this is probably not very realistic, if your speed debuffer debuffs the entire race minus your runners, then that's essentially you just giving your other runners a speed buff, right? Because everyone else is slower, so you're you're comparatively faster. Whereas a blocker doesn't do anything like that. It's actually just a dead slot. If it's not doing its job of or attempting to do its job of preventing a front runner from hitting their angling and scheming and stuff like that, then it's it's actually just doing nothing and it's a dead slot. You're literally just uh, hindering yourself in the upcoming CM. The real thing here is just that blockers don't make sense. There's too much RNG, mostly because of position keep, that makes it so that running a blocker is not effective. It doesn't stop you, stop other people from getting what they want most of the time. Half the time? I don't know, whatever. Whatever you want to put into perspective here. And if you're saying that you can't win if someone else is in first, then, I mean, just from the numbers I wrote on the screen, uh, you're, what, so you're expecting to lose with your one blocker 50% of the time because your blocker is only going to be effective 50% of the time? Like, it's not realistic, right? Like, I mean, everyone still needs to pass a wit check for angling and scheming, except for Saiyan Sky. So they still have a chance for that to fail. And then like you have to hit your good furious feet and on your left or whatever, whatever uh, other, whatever you're running as your aces. There's just so much RNG that lowering your chance of winning to increase your chance of, or to lower the chance of someone else succeeding and doing like the front runner thing isn't, you're not playing to win. You're playing to make someone else lose. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that it'll make you win. Because, like, if they have a late surger as well, they still could just win off of that. Because if they hit their furious feet and you don't, they're still just going to win, even though you stopped their front runner from uh, doing what they wanted to do. The real name, the story here is just you, you have to play to win, not to play to stop other people from winning. But yeah, that's... I hope this was, uh, uh, I don't know, useful, I guess, just like as like a mindset kind of thing. Um, if you want to see this chart, it's on my sheet. Uh, I'll put a link in the description, but I have like a stamina calculator and stuff. And this is on the calculations page and you have to scroll down a lot. Uh, here, I'll show you. Oh, here. You go to the... This is what the sheet looks like. If you go to the calculations page, it's down here. And then you can change this. So the pre-anniversary data um, says that the hill is only like 12, 112 meters. Post-anniversary data says the hill is like 250 meters. So these numbers change, but I assume we're actually on the pre-anniversary track data. Um, but it really doesn't change that much. It's not a big deal. But yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's it. Uh, I hope this is helpful for people. I hope this makes people want to run aces instead of blockers. Because, again, I think you're just shooting yourself in the foot running a blocker. Uh, yeah. Good luck, everybody, on Cancer Cup. It's coming out in a couple of days. You still got time to... You know, put your blocker in the trash and train an ace. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.